Wishbone. Wishbone Entertainment. Consistently played sports for your whole life since you were a little kid and shit. Like, what what you think made you go to go the other route? Because I mean, you you were showing us the videos, bro. You was killing shit, you know. Honestly, I made that choice at a time where the crest was handicapped. Uh huh. My neighborhood was handicapped. You feel me? Mac Dre was in jail. You know, at the time, PSD was in YA. Another yeah. rapper from the crest. Another rapper from the crest. Mac Lee was locked up. Another rapper from the Crest, Coolio, mm -hmm. was locked up. Mm -hmm. All the Crest had as a voice at the time was Mac Maul. Yeah. So I felt, you know, even though me and Maul was from the same crew, Maul got a different speech to give him than what I got to give him. And I felt the only way what I got to say is going to get represented or heard is if I do it. So at the time, really, it was like I signed my scholarship with intentions to do both, yeah. you know, rap and play football. But I didn't know at that time, scholarship athletes at the college level could not get paid. Yeah. So once it was on record that I was getting paid a certain amount of money, I was in conflict okay. with the, with the, the contract of my scholarship because I was getting a full ride scholarship yeah. to Washington State, okay. which they was paying for my whole full ride to go to school. Uh -huh. So I wasn't supposed to be on record getting no money and I had just signed for X amount of dollars signing a deal with Young Black Brother Records. Yeah. You feel me? So it was like, it was either you gonna get that money back or you gonna owe the school that money. And I was like, I'm not giving shit back and I'm not <laughs> owing nobody. Yeah, yeah. You know what, coach, bro, I'm not coming, it's over. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Plus. I felt far as the rap shit at that point, I was seeing niggas from my neighborhood really making it in rap. Okay, I, yeah, let me get it. Let me get. Let me get a chance to run the ball. Yeah, yeah. You know, hand me the ball. Let me. Let me do what I could do. And I'm holding my. I've been holding myself back because at that point, it was a lot of niggas that knew that I rap. Uh -huh. But it was like a lot of niggas didn't really want to fuck with Doobie because it was like, man, that nigga play football. He ain't worried about no rap shit. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But I wanted to be heard. So it was like, shit, you were heard. Shit, yeah, you were heard. For sure, you know? You feel me? When did you start making music? Like, while you was playing football? Or when, like, when I, you My first raps got wrote in, um, in, in elementary school. Mm -hmm. Me and my niggas, Tata, Nunu, uh, Fat Dad, Durante Holland, we all rapped for the uh, poetry contest at elementary, at Elsa Whitman Elementary School. Right, right. We was like, we was the first niggas, you know how they had a poetry contest where you gotta go find a poem and remember your poem? Right. Man, we wrote raps and battle rapped for the for the poetry contest. Did y'all win, you won? Yeah. That's <laughs> you know, always ranking. Yeah. Mr. Swagger class. Right, right. Fucked over Mr. Cook class. Ty Ty them couldn't see us. Uh, <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> always so there's something that's some, oh, that's always been there that just you feel me finally just went full in with it after you put the pig skin down. And when so when did you and Mac Dre and everybody start clicking together? When did you really start fucking with Dre and Mary and all the cutties? Based on that. It was like levels, levels to the game. You know, you had the, my nigga, the, the Thrill of North era level. You had the Mac Dre Romper Room level era. You had the, you know, like right between them was the Mac era, you feel me? So I came up in the Crew Thing Sesame Street era. We was both two crews that was up under the romper room, so we watched they whole evolution. They was like four years older than us. Right. So, you know, I was a nigga at the junior high school, knowing that Mac Dre was at the high school killing them on the talent show. You know what I'm saying? I was a nigga that we went to the Omega Boys Club to watch Mac Dre shows to the point where up and coming rappers like me, Mac Maul, Young Lay, Ironic, you know what I'm saying? Another 
rapper from Malil, all us came up being opening acts for when Mac Dre rapped at the boys club. You know what I'm saying? So that was, even before that, that was my, my first meeting Mac Dre. It wasn't really the hoopla of Mac Dre. Right. Because you got a kid, a baby, a crest baby. I'm knowing all the niggas that romper room niggas and you know, Mac Dre niggas before romper room. Right. You know what I'm saying? I grew up in the church with Ronnie Wags, Ray Wags, EB, Greg Bowler. All us went to the same church. Right. You know what I'm saying? All us played Little League together, Kilo. All oh, let's play Pop Warner shit together from six, seven, eight, nine years old. So when Mac Dre come to the crest, it's not at that point for me, Mac Dre. Right. It's who is this nigga? Right, right. You feel me? This is an unknown face to me. You know what I mean? It ain't to the even to the point of a look up to. Right. It's already older niggas that age, born and raised from the crest that I didn't grew up looking up to. So even when Dre first got to the crest, it wasn't a look up, it was a who is this nigga? Right. You know what I mean? Even when Dre was battling Reek Daddy, I knew a Reek Daddy. I, Reek Daddy was one of the OG rappers I looked up to, so in the Mac Dre, Reek Daddy battle, I sided with Reek Daddy. You know what I'm saying? Like, ooh, nigga Reek on this nigga. Woo the woo woo. But then as Mac Dre began to blossom, even when it was rough for Mac Dre, you feel me? Because it ain't always been just peachy peachy. Right, right. Mac Dre ain't always been the Mac Dre that you know about far as like the whole crest been behind Mac Dre. Mac Dre done went through the hating, got beat up, car got took, car got burnt up, all this shit. So when he went through that, that's how he got his respect in the crest to the point where niggas looked up to him now like, nah, bruh, bruh really from here and ain't no punk, then been to the pen for here, you know what I'm saying, all the shit. But even before he went to the pen on the rap shit, when he first got on, he was reaching out. He was open arms to the younger generation, to the Mac Malls, PSD, Doobies, you know what I'm saying? He was Mac Lees, he was open to all of that. You feel me? So I, I, I can say I like first met him like maybe I was what eighth eighth grade, something like that. You know what I'm saying? So I was like what like thirteen around that, and I, I figured he was like seventeen. You know what I'm saying? But even that was just meeting the motherfucker. It wasn't more of the whoa, right? We one mile. You know what I'm saying? Okay. When it got to the point where they romper room, they crew thing, they Sesame Street, which was our crew. Then it was a different respect, cause it was we in the field. Even though we young niggas, niggas you niggas got funk with four, five years older than us. Nigga, if we ain't tripping with them same niggas y'all tripping with, we tripping with they, they little brothers. Period, period. Who the romp got funk with? Right. This part of town, they part of town, anything that age, we tripping with them. You feel me? So it was like a mutual respect thing. So as we got older, you know, you know when you when you get past that age where, you know, like say if you was my big brother and you four years older than me and we even went through them years of I go get my big brother. Mm -hmm. Till we hit the point where fuck that age difference, nigga, that's my brother. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ain't no go get your big brother. You know, it's handle your business on the spot. If your big brother want to come, whatever. When it got to that, it was a mutual respect, you feel me, between, you know, them three crews in the crest. That was our era. That was our war party. The romper room, cool thing, strictly says, set the street, you feel me, and that's how we moved. So it was like, that's when it really tied in. Right. You know what I mean? That's when it was like, a deeper relationship with Mac Dre because he knew what these younger niggas brought to the table. You feel me? These young niggas is in the field, nigga. We 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 moving. 
You feel me? The, 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 Se the Sesame Street niggas is moving. The crew thing niggas is moving. It ain't just the romper room, nigga. You know if y'all get into something, nigga, we coming too. We go to a house party, uh, Continentals, dance, whatever the fuck, whatever it was. If a nigga trip with y'all, nigga, he trip with us. And we might, at that time, we might not be nothing but 16. You niggas is 20 and shit, so what though? Still with the shit. We own them, yeah. whatever. You know what I mean? So I, 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 I kind of like what Matt Mac Dre on a real deal where it count level. Met him maybe like 15. I knew of him as the at 13 and shit, but it was a different, you know, like I say, at 13 and shit, it was like, okay, okay who is this nigga? Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, what's going on with bro? I heard he rap or whatever, but I, and I wasn't even in the really following rappers at that time, so that didn't mean shit. Right. right. You know, I don't give a fuck that you rap. Right. You know what I mean? At that point, it was like, you know, it was more. We were still waiting for what what did it when the Mac album when you first went into a a, a, a record store and seen the Mac shit on the shelf, that's what sparked the spark for Crest nigga, cause now you really knew, oh we really could make it. Right. Up until this point, you might have heard niggas with demos and all of this shit, but till you see going to the shit and you see the Mac shit on the shelf mm, and it's cool. NWA, uh, EPMD, uh, Rodney Owen, Joe Cooley, and all these type of motherfuckers and he on the shelf with them, that's when you felt, oh nigga, we, you really can make it in this shit. Yeah. Up until then it was just, man, demo shit. The nigga rap around town and all of that shit. Okay, the nigga rap, no, nigga, no, this nigga really rap rap. Yeah, right. And just so happened, I think I was like in 11th grade when the Mac got killed. You feel me? And in that short amount of time, you know, the steps that Mac Dre took to take what the Mac left, to take that to another level before he got sent to the feds, it was like, pfft. You know, really, that, that's what set the stage for Mac Maul. You know what I mean? And, and Maul was my, like my younger nigga by a year, maybe two, you feel me? But the doors that was opened by that chain of command is what put the battery in the in the back of the rest of us. You know what I'm saying? You know From the possible. Mac, the Mac Dre, the Mac Mall, them doors that was open put the battery pack in the back of the doobies, PSDs, and everything else that came after. Like, nah, nigga, they really ready to pay some niggas, nigga, if you serious about your shit. Yeah, right. You feel me? So. When you make your first song with Dre? When he came off in the feds. Mm -hmm. And that was based on, he was fucking with Kyrie. And I happened to be fucking with Kyrie. My album was the album that was in the works at the time, right when he came home. So it was like, ooh, the Cuddy doing his thing. Doobie then, then took steps while I was gone. Nigga, I, when I left, Doobie was football. Nigga, Doobie, a boy in this rap shit right now. This your album? Let me hear this song. Oh, and, and you finna give me a chance to shine on this right when I'm coming home? Yeah. Cuddy, I got you. You feel me? So the first, and that wasn't even a song with us. That was like, Cuddy, do your thing. I don't even got to be on the song. Do your thing. You feel me? On my first album. And, and, and he shining, you know. I could tell him cat off a fish wagon. You know he took that shit, ran with it.